This is one of the lift shafts in the John Hancock Tower. Down below the winding motors, the two main shafts are over 300 meters deep. And if these cables were to suddenly snap, the lift would not fall. Every skyscraper lift in the world has an emergency brake system to prevent a free fall. The brakes work in the same way they did when they were invented by Mr. Otis in 1853. Contrary to popular belief, Mr. Otis did not invent the elevator. Mr. Otis, in 1853, invented the safety mechanism that made riding up and down an elevator safe. Before Otis began tinkering, lifts were only used to haul freight. At the time, upper stories in buildings were considered the least favorable. All that changed at an exposition in Chicago. Elijah Otis startled onlookers by sawing through the ropes holding up a demonstration lift. And he actually cut the rope with a knife. The crowd goes, ah, like this. And so what had happened was the car begins to fall and all of a sudden it goes like this. Essentially throws out the car's elbows, grabs the rails and stops the car safely. The mid-1800s were a time of industrial triumph. The railways were opening up the continents, steamships were opening up the world. Elijah Otis's safety lift opened up the sky. Two things made skyscrapers possible. The elevator first, allowing you to uh, go to higher floors than you could comfortably climb. The development of the steel frame made it possible to go much, much higher. By the mid-1960s, the Sears Tower and the John Hancock have partially solved the problem by creating sky lobbies. This is the equivalent to a commuter train change on the way to the suburbs. Well, you have to take an elevator to 44, and then you have to go around to the apartment elevators to go up to the apartments. I remember the first time I came in here, I thought, who would want to take two elevators? You're not even aware of it. It's so fast. It's so easy. Architects and owners love the sky lobby concept in a very tall building. They free up more space for office rentals and therefore more cash flow. In any case, there are still a lot of lifts in the Hancock. 30 to be precise. Dave Vinci is a lift mechanic who knows the Hancock system inside and out. Up hall call, down hall call. This is a 140. I'll show you a 6850. You can get a better look here. I don't know how, how engrossed you want to get with this. When these drop out, you've disengaged your generator fields and you're running on your leveling fields. I started working for Otis when I uh, was discharged from the Navy 33 years ago. When the selector says it wants to stop, it'll pick up one of these relays. And when it finds one, it resets these dogs right here. When Dave began at Otis, lifts were run by racks of noisy relays. Now, in the Hancock, they're being replaced gradually with digital chips. Dave was raised in a relay world. Different ball game. You can't compare the two. Which is more friendly, chips or relays? Oh, relay logic. Absolutely. But uh, this will become friendly, too. We just got to get to know one another. Otis's invention made skyscrapers possible. They are far safer than commuting to work on a motorway. I thought my quality of life would improve simply by eliminating the, the trauma 